In this exercise, I'm going to take a set of point cloud data, convert it to a mesh, and then add some cutter paths to it. So I'll start the process by converting my point cloud into a, a mesh. I'll add a new layer, so the data is automatically added to the new layer. So I'll just go to the default settings, which are populated automatically. So here's my mesh representation of the part. So if I now come and refine this mesh, so just to remove any deviation errors in the mesh, um, I'll also add a new layer to add my new refined mesh data onto the new layer. So at least I can come back and check between the various steps that I'm going through. So there's my refined mesh. Just activate that layer. Now this has one or two holes in it, so I'll use the fill gaps uh, from the reverse engineering functions. So I'll select the mesh, deselect any areas that I do not want filled in, hit preview, and it automatically then fills in any, any gaps in the mesh. Again, I'll add a new layer just to add my uh, new result onto the an additional layer. There we go. So I'll make that my active layer. So now if I use a smoothing operation just to smooth out the transition between all the triangles within my mesh to get a nice smooth mesh ready to add some cam operations. So again, I'll add a new layer into the layer tree. And create a new mesh on that layer. Make that my active layer. So also I've got a, a set of surfaces here that um, I want to position my mesh. So if I use an, an align function or an alignment function, you can see it's automated alignment, not quite as close. If I just refine that mesh position, you can see it just tidies up the, the positioning for me. If I apply that movement, again, add a new layer. So that mesh now has been moved into the correct machining position. Make that new position my active layer. So now, I've done a little bit more work, just filled in some more holes. If I come into the cam and add a model, so I add my mesh into my piece manager as my machined part. And if I use that and add some machining stock around uh, my mesh, so I've now added some stock. So if I just hide that, so you can see the mesh again. There we go. So if we come in and add some operations, so I'll start by adding just a, a roughing hybrid. Choose a ball nose cutter here to start with. Make some small changes. So if I pick the, the solid that I've added for stock, that's my boundary, machining boundary. If I put a bit of an oversize on, just a step down. If I build that operation, Pretty for the results, and we'll click OK. So I'll add a secondary function uh, or an operation, should I say? So another three axis that's had a finishing standard operation. Okay, so let's add that cutter there. So let's just adjust the step down or step over to uh, an angle limit. And also just adjust the, the stroke angle. Okay, let's build that operation as well. And there we go. So let's highlight these two operations and just open up the kinematics to see the machined results. So if we start this, okay, so there we go, machining our stock. I'll move this forward so we can see the the roughing results, move to the next operation. There we go, so that's the results of our 
roughing operations, if I start to run the finishing up, you can see now we're just starting to better define the part. If I now forward that operation to the final result, and there we go, there's our final machine result from our mesh.